this is a quiz. <laughs> what did I forget? The CS dev and the CS config file. Of course, the worker need exactly the same settings than the web role because the web role accesses table store and queue store, and the worker accesses table store and queue store too. So both of them, both of them need the storage connection stream. Copy the configurations and hit F5 again. The important thing here is that I will not try to upload anything. I will just wait for a few moments and if everything works fine, yeah, here we have it. The, the worker has been started in the background and maybe you can remember a few minutes ago I already started the web role and this web role uh, has stored a lot of messages in our message queue and a lot of order payloads in our table store and now the worker picks up this stuff and we can uh, walk through the, the steps that the worker does. First thing, it gets the message. The message is the good here you see is the GUID that identifies the order in the table store. Next one, we have a query to the table store, a WCF data services query, and we have the message payload. Here you see the message payload. It is a correctly formatted order that we have read from table store. Now we can process this order. So we store it in the database. We can delete the message. We can delete the, the payload, save the changes, and that's it. When I hit F5, we will hit the breakpoint again with the next order. But I will disable this breakpoint and hit F5 and let it run. And in the meantime, I start again my cloud storage studio from Cerebretta again. And if I'm fast enough, I can open the development storage here and open the queues. And you see we have 89 items here. Hit refresh, 75 left. The worker is doing all the heavy lifting in the background. It works through the order queue and can also uh, order our table here, table store. And maybe you see 83 items left. No, you don't see it because it's too large. Now you see it, 83 items left. I hit refresh, one left, hit refresh, zero entities. We have successfully processed all our orders and the queue should be empty too. Fine, very nice. Application works. It uh, is able to pro do the, the processing in the worker. Uh, the web role passes the work by using the queue and passes the, 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 the order payload through in table storage. And you have seen how you can query tables with WCF data services. Here you see the code. You have seen how you can add data to table storage and you have seen how you can delete data from table storage too. The last step, and it's really a very, very small step, is a short demo about Blob Store. Blob Store is, is very similar to queues and very similar to, to table store. In fact, Blob Store is just like a file system, but it's not a file system uh, that is installed locally on one instance of the web role or one instance of the worker role. It's really a file system that is distributed across your whole web farm, across your whole Azure web farm. And Blob Store access can be done again through our um, through our cloud storage account. I've previously already created this blob client, maybe you can remember, and now we can use this blob client to access the blobs. Um, this dot blob client dot get, and now it's an important thing, uh, all the blobs are organized in so-called containers. You can imagine a container it is very similar to a drive, to a, a, an installed drive that is, in, that is working locally in your computer. You have a C drive, your D drive, and so on. And in Blob Store, you don't have drives, but you have containers. These containers have names, and you reference it, for instance, yeah, let's store this one here again in a public constant string uh, confirmation. confirmation. Uh, container equals to confirmations. Yeah, that's it. And go down here and say csc dot confirmation container. Or 
container equals two and say container dot create if not exists. This is again two lines of code that just make sure that the container really is there and let's store this one. Uh, blob container. Yep. Add property. Here we have the property and again we have a private setter. It's uh, much more beautiful like this and let's say this dot blob container dot create if not exists. Uh, this is the code that is necessary to open a connection to blob store and now we can for instance create a kind of let's say confirmation confirmation document in in blob store. This would be a, a a possible application for blob store here. So what we do here is we can say uh, connection dot uh, blob client. No, I'm sorry. I have to rebuild this stuff because I need intelligence. Uh, connection dot um, okay fine blob container dot blob container dot get blob reference and now it, it wants a name of the blob and the name of the blob could for instance be again our message just the, the unique identifier of our um, of our order target blob equals to the stuff here and and whoop Oh, sorry, a yeah, string, what did I do? The message is, is an object. Now we have the message as a string, and now we can just uh, write to this blob by, for instance, let's say, target blob dot upload blob, and I don't know why IntelliSense is not working anymore. I will reopen this file, let me see. Cloud storage connection, maybe it is, oh, sorry, wrong file. Um, work a roll here and yep, let's try it again. Target blob dot now it works fine. Upload text and let's say string format uh, order zero accepted and message to the string. That's it. That's all you need to, to write to a blob store and, and now you could do something like target blob dot get shared access signature with some parameters. You could can look up the um, the details in MSDN. With get shared access signature you can do something very very nice. You can get a URI that you can give to your end customers to download the generated content. It could be a video, a music file or in this case just a document PDF TIFF or whatever you have created and the nice thing with get shared access signature is that it is a signed URI that can have a certain validity period so you can say okay in the next five minutes the user should be able to access this document but after five minutes uh, the the URI is not valid anymore and the user will not be able to download the blobs content so you have all this nice little security and permission features uh, in place that you often need whenever you want to get um, to to allow someone from outside to access your blob store. Of course, you could make it simple and say that your whole blob container is is uh, is public, and then everyone can use your URIs to access your your blobs. But this is a, a seldom situation uh, outside of development environments. So let's try this one. So uh, I will again open our Cloud Storage Studio. Cloud Storage Studio. Yep. Open Development Storage and show you that containers. Here is our confirmation container, and this confirmation container is completely empty. So let's upload file upload parameter let's upload a few orders upload file hit upload file put this one in the background and say refresh
And here we have it. You see the first confirmation documents. We can double click it. Cerebretta will start downloading the content for us. In the development environment, the uh, container is public. And so I can download the document. And I see order XYZ has been accepted. Fine. So our project works perfectly right. Uh, the workers are doing their job behind the scenes. They process the orders that they have received uh, via message queues, table store, and they use blob store to create a simple kind of confirmation document that the user can download. So that's it. That's it for today. You have seen the different Azure storage technologies from SQL Azure to blob store to queue storage to to uh, table storage and I hope you found something interesting. Feel free, feel free to, to send me uh, email and feedback and questions and things like that. My email is uh, rainer at software minus architects dot uh, dot at or rainer at timecockpit.com. I, I look for I'm looking forward to, to hear from you. So enjoy the rest of the day and bye.